Welcome back to Keterific Journey with Mike. I'm Mike. Glad to see you here. Appreciate you stopping by. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and the like button. And come on back. I'd love to see you come back. Today, I'm going to be making a dish that I saw my buddy over at Jim's Kitch Kitchen make. It was a, a, a John Wayne casserole. Well, the traditional John Wayne casserole is not keto, so I'm going to try to do it into a keto version and see how it turns out. Now, this will be the first time I've made it, so come along with me and let's give it a try. So, I've heated up my pan. I'm going to use a deep thing. He used a skillet, but I'm going to use a deep thing because i got a little more going on with what's going to be cooked in the pot. Ooh, you hear that applause? That means that pan's nice and hot, which is just what I wanted. Well, I've chopped up some peppers and some onions to put into our casserole. Now we're going to see if I can put them in the pot without making them go all over the stove and have to do cleaning before I even go any further. Plus, the deep pot will help with any kind of splash from browning the meat that we're going to brown here in a minute. And this is about a half an onion and four uh, banana type peppers that will, uh, as you can see, the red and the, I call it orange, but some people call them yellow. So, but it looks orange to me, so that's what I'm going to go with. Okay, so we don't want to get them too done. We really just want to kind of spread them before we put our meat in. Uh, not going to try and get them translucent too much. Just uh, kind of get them shredded a little bit so they'll be at least hard cooked. And we'll have those juices a little more. Alright. That's looking good there. Alright, so now time to add our meat and we are using ground turkey. Well first off let me add a little garlic. Let me add a little garlic in there too. I know you say, you said a little garlic. Well, that's a little to me. Let me slap that around to get that incorporated. Pick on the meat. Ground turkey. Something's got to do with a better buy than the ground beef. For no other reason. I'm going to turn that heat down just a touch to about a medium low. Because I don't want to burn anything. Quick wash on the hands here. Okay, so let's get this meat browned. I'll brown it. Y'all can, I'll bring you back when it's browned for you to look at it. Okay, the meat's brown. Now, I've, I added something before coming back to the video. Sorry about that. Forgot that I hadn't turned it on. And that was uh, some taco seasoning. And I put what would be the equivalent of a pouch of taco seasonings that you get. Like, whether it be the El Paso or whatever, but it's the equivalent of that. I think it's like one or so ounces or something like that, two ounces maybe. And I did the equivalent of that with an eyeballing of it. 
Now, I'm also going to add in some mushrooms. I didn't add them earlier because these are already cooked. I'm still having a heck of a time buying fresh mushrooms, but I actually did find some at the grocery store, but they looked horrible. And I said, no, I'd rather use a can. At least they look better. So I didn't add them at the beginning because they are already pretty much cooked. And so on this more for the flavor of the mushroom, I drained the little can and put it in there. And now we're going to put in, if I can find the can opener, some canned tomatoes. Now, I'm not draining the can too much. I'm going to drain a little bit, but I'm not draining it much because with the taco seasoning, I didn't add any kind of water to it, so I want a little bit of the juice from the tomatoes in there, but not a lot. So let me drain a little bit off of there. And now, let me pour this in. There we go. So we got that can in. That was a what was that can? I think he used uh, Rotel. Some some recipes use Rotel. This was a just a regular diced petite diced tomatoes. A two a 28 ounce can of uh, uh, tomatoes. So. Some folks use the Rotel, well, my wife, even the mild Rotel, she doesn't care for it, so that's why I'm not using it, so hope y'all don't mind. Now, to this, we are going to add, because he lined the bottom of it with uh, some biscuits. Well, biscuits, they ain't keto by any stretch of the imagination, so I'm adding some cauliflower rice to it. And gonna mix it in there. Here is another reason why we're using the high sided pot instead of the pan. And I decided to put it all in there in one pan, and then I'm gonna put my topping on top that makes the crust. So, some folks, they do the biscuits. The regular one does the biscuits, then the meat, then the, and if you do peppers or tomatoes or rotel, then you put that in there and you kind of layer it. Well, I'm putting it all together. For somebody who's a purist of the John Wayne casserole, I have probably committed a mortal sin. But, that's okay. I'm probably committing it anyway because I'm trying to do this without doing it with all the ingredients that they want because it's keto and I can't do half of them. So and we're just going to let that cook for a minute and kind of reduce down a little bit so we can put it in our casserole pan. And while we do that, I'm going to let y'all Take a break for me and I'll bring you right back. Okay, we're gonna make our topping that will become our crust. We've got sour cream. That's enough sour cream, I think. Let me get another spoon. We got mayo. Going in. And we're gonna put some cheese in it. I may not have a big enough bowl for the amount of cheese I'm putting in, but I'll, I'll manage somehow. I'll mix in a little bit at a time, that's what I'll do.
this will just be spread on top of it and it'll be our topping it's not the top crust it's not really a crust but it'll be a top part of it it's going to spread across the top the topping that's the word i'm looking for okay mix that in Doing it a little bit at a time is probably better anyway because it'll make it easier to get it incorporated. Kind of like when you're doing something in a mixture, do it a little bit at a time, adding it in. When you're doing something for a baked dish or similar. See, one more handful ought about do it, I think. I'm not adding any seasonings to this because sour cream and the mayo have a lot of seasoning to it so the flavor of it is what I want to shine through and the cheese so that's the most important part to me that's plenty all right let me get my casserole dish ready up so I got my casserole dish all fixed up and I'm going to spoon this on top you know what I bet this would make a good dip for a chip or a cracker I'm going to spoon it on top and then I'm going to kind of spread it around now you're saying Lord Mike you made enough to feed a small army you're right but this way I get to eat on it multiple meals and I get to enjoy it more than once and this is what I call meal prep <clears throat> because of it okay so we're going to just spread this out over it and try to get as much of it on there as we can to all the parts of it It'll spread out, I think, not positive, but I think it'll spread out some while it's cooking. Watch it not do it now that I done said it will. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna have some overflow when the bubbles happen, when the bubbling happens. That's all right, I'll fix that up. Okay, that's good enough. That's good enough. So I'm putting it in a 325 oven for roughly 40 minutes, for just 30 minutes to start, and I think it'll end up going about 40. But I'll come back when it's done. So we're back for the taste, taste test. And we have granddaughter Madison, Maddie. Don't call me Madison. Mmm. It's really good. Excellent. Here's what it looks like. So we had the finished product. This is the plated product, and it's time to dig in. Oh, pilgrim. Somebody ate it. Yes, sir, Ree. Somebody ate it. But it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Like hell it wasn't. Mm -hmm.